Hey everybody, Mr. Bowman here. We've got another algebra video for us. This time around, we're going through the merit questions for the 2022 exam. Let's get straight into it with question number 33. And this was a bit of a doozy in terms of the working. Um, so if the area of the same triangle shown above, in this case, it was actually below because I copied it for us, is three centimeters squared, um, find the value of X. They've given us the formula to calculate the area of a triangle. If you forgot, and they've told us about centimeters. So let's start off with formulas. I always like to write my formulas down. Area is equal to one half of base times height. So this question here, a lot of us might be like, oh, we've got the Y, um, but this here isn't the base or the height, so we can actually ignore that side of the triangle. So we've got the base down here and the height down there. So we're going to substitute both out the B and the H, put in those ones there, and also, we've been told the area is 3, so we can actually substitute the area and put in 3 instead. So we know that 3 will be equal to 1 half times the first side, which is going to be x minus 3, times the second side, 2x minus 5. Um, you could have these either, around, either way around, so don't stress about them too much. So I'm going to start by getting rid of this one half. I can get rid of that half by doing a times two to both sides. So that means six will be equal to my brackets, which is x minus three, two x minus five. Um, not much here to do apart from expand. So we're gonna do that times that. So six will be equal to two x squared minus five x, and then along the bottom minus 6x and then we've got plus 15 because the two negatives result in a positive number. Let's simplify the terms in the middle. That becomes negative 11x. So we've got 6 is equal to 2x squared minus 11x plus 15. I'm now going to make this equal to 0 because I can't really factorize my quadratic until it's equal to 0. So we've got minus 6 minus that becomes 0 is equal to 2x squared minus 11x plus 9. I can now think about the grouping method because it doesn't look like there's any common factors here. So we've got 2 times 9 is equal to 18. So the 2 comes from here and the 9 comes from there. So we now need to know, well, what multiplies to this 18 but adds to the negative 11 we had in the middle? And hopefully you're thinking negative 2 and negative 9. So they add to negative 11, multiply to 18. So let's get our next line of working. So 2x squared, I'm going to go minus 2x here to represent the negative 2. And then I'm going to go minus 9x to represent the negative 9. And then we've got plus 9. I can now use the grouping method to factorize each part, the first and second bits. So 0 is equal to, they've got a 2x in common, so that will be x minus 1. These have a negative 9 in common, noticing I'm using the sign from the first term here. And that there will also be x minus 1. And I like this because I've got the same bracket twice, which means I have not made any silly math errors. So 0 is equal to, I'm going to write down my common bracket, which is x minus 1. And my leftovers, 2x and minus 9, they're going to come together to make the second bracket, 2x minus 9. And I've run out of room because the, the working was quite um, extensive here. So moving up to the top, my first bracket, x minus 1, if that there is equal to 0, I'll have an answer. So I'm going to go plus 1 to both sides. So x1 will be equal to 1. I'm then going to do this for the second bracket, which is 2x minus 9. That there is equal to 0, I'm going to go plus 9 plus 9. So 2x is equal to 9, divide by 2, divide by 2, x is equal to, you could write 4.5 or 9 over 2, that's my second answer of x, both is all good, I always like my fractions, so I'll leave them as a fraction. We are now on to question 34, um, got it down there, so a company makes plastic ducks, the total cost can be represented by the equation here, and n is the number of ducks they're trying to figure out, a and B are some fixed numbers, so that's probably what we're going to need to calculate before we can do anything. They've given us two scenarios here, so it looks like it's probably going to be simultaneous equations um, because we've got two different scenarios, and we need to figure out the cost of finding 300 ducks. So I guess the first thing to note is this equation here, 
We've been told that the price is 580, and we've been told n is 140. So we can use that to form one equation based on what they've given us here. And our second equation will come from the next line. We know that the price was 640, and we know the number of ducks or n was 200. So I'm going to form two different equations, and that should leave me with a and b. And then P and N should be go gone away based on those numbers. So let's jot down my formula. P is equal to 2A plus BN. So equation number one, P, which is 580, will be equal to 2A. And don't forget, we know what N is. N is going to be 140. So it's going to be 140B. We can then do the same for equation number two. We've got 640 and 200 over here. So we've got 640 is equal to 2a, and then we've got plus 200b. And I'm liking this because I've got 2a present in both equations. If I subtract 1 from 2, the a's are going to go away, leaving me with b, and I can go ahead and solve it. So 1 minus 2. So this minus this is going to be negative 60. And that will be equal to this minus this, which is 0. They cancel each other out. Um, so that will leave us with 140 minus 200. That's negative 60 B. And I can cancel out that negative 60 by doing divide by negative 60 to both sides. So negative 60 divided by negative 60 is 1. And that is what B is equal to. I'm now going to put this into either of the equations above. Um, I would suggest picking the easier looking one. Um, so I'm probably going to pick the 200 one because it's probably easier to deal with the number 200. Um, so we've got 640 is equal to 2a plus 200 times 1. I'm going to go minus 200 to both sides to get rid of that. So 440 is equal to 2a, dividing both sides by 2. So a is equal to 220. So I've got that there. I can now um, figure out the actual question. Noting it didn't tell me to figure out what A and B was. It's told me to figure out what the plastic ducks are or how much 300 ducks would be. So our formula for the price would be price would be equal to um, A was 220. So that's going to be 440, which is 2A plus N being the number of ducks that we get. So in this case, it's going to be 440 plus N being the 300 ducks. So my price, $740. We are now on to question number 35, and this is a pretty mathy one. Um, so let's start off by jotting the equation down because we need to solve it. So we've got 3 times 2, and then we've got 4x minus 5 equals to 24. So because it's an exponential equation, my end goal is getting the powers the same. So it's something like 2x, um, 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of something else. But this looks difficult because 3 isn't a power of 2. So for example, if we have 2 and we double it, 2, 4, um, 8, 16, 32, and so on, 3 doesn't fit on that list, so we can't really deal with it. So all I can really do is get rid of the 3 by doing a divide by 3, and I'm hoping for the best, because I don't really know where I'm going with this at this stage. Divide by 3, divide by 3. So that means 2 to the power of 4x minus 5 will be equal to 8. And I'm really pleased to see that number 8, because it is on that list that I talked about. So 8, because it's the third number, 8 will be 3 cubed. So I'm going to change my 8. So 2 to the power of 4x minus 5 is equal to 2 cubed. I can now cancel out my base numbers, which I'm aiming for. 4x minus 5 is equal to 3. Let's back out that 5 by doing a plus 5. 4x is equal to 8. Finally, divide by 4, divide by 4. x equals 2. And yay, that question wasn't as difficult as it looked. But... That first step divided by 3, not the most obvious one, but we got there. We are now on to question number 36. And this one's pretty typical of MCAT questions. They've got a lot of rectangles and squares and stuff like that in there. If two squares um, are drawn below, calculate how much bigger A is compared with B. So generally speaking, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to do... Um, 
A minus B, and that there is going to get us the difference of the two um, sizes, and that's what we've been asked about. So that difference is going to be an algebraic expression. Um, no stress whatsoever. Whatever it is, that's just the answer. So our difference, um, and I think this one's going to get quite messy by the looks of it. So the because we're dealing with the areas, um, the area would be base times height. So that's going to be, for the first square, it's going to be 3x plus 2y, and it's going to be multiplied by the same thing. I've written a 2 there for some reason, but we've got 3x plus 2y. So base times height, they're the same thing in this case. I'm now going to subtract my second shape, and my working's going to look a bit weird here because I've run out of room, but I'm minusing 3x minus 2y, and same thing again because the base is also the height. I'm now going to expand at this stage, but I do want to note this minus sign in front of a bracket is a bit of an alarm bell. There's going to be an issue here, I think. Um, but let's see what this comes to. So we're going to do equals this times this, 9x squared, and then we've got plus 6xy down the bottom there, plus another 6xy, and then finally plus 4y squared. And this is where the minus sign thing I identified is going to be a bit annoying. We're going to minus, and don't forget we need the brackets, whatever this expands to. So that minus sign is going to hit everything that comes from this expansion, not just the first one, which is a very common error we see. So that's going to be 9x squared um, minus 6xy minus another 6xy plus 4y. So let's expand the bottom bracket. So basically anything positive, we're going to make it negative. Anything negative, we'll make it positive. So I've got 9x squared plus 12xy, just noting I've grouped together these two xy's, plus 4y squared. I'm then going to go minus 9x squared. Um, this in the middle here, that becomes negative 12xy, which we're then going to make positive. So that becomes positive 12xy. And then finally, positive 4y, and I've forgotten the squared at the end there. Um, will become negative 4y squared. And this one here is quite nice. The positive 9x squared is cancelled out by the negative one over here. The positive 4y squared is cancelled out by the negative one at the end. So that leaves me with 12xy plus 12xy. So that there is going to be equal to 24xy. We are now on to question number 37, and this one, simplify this as far as possible. Let's start by writing down my fraction, x squared minus 4 over 15x squared minus 13x plus 2. So the bottom one, there's not much we can do about this apart from using the grouping method. There's no square numbers anywhere, um, there's no common factors, so we've just got to use the grouping method. But I actually quite like the top a little bit, because these are both squares. So that top there is going to be quite nice and easy, that's going to be difference between two squares. So the square root of 9 and the square root of x squared would be 9x, and then the square root of 4 would be equal to 2. Oh sorry, I've written 9x up the top there, but that should be 3x, shouldn't it? So 3x, and then as I said, square root of 4 is equal to 2. So those are going to be my brackets. So it's going to be 3x with the 2, 3x with the 2 at the end, and we're going to do a plus sign in one, a minus sign in the other. Doesn't matter which way around they are. So that is going to be over. I now need to come up with the, you know, using the grouping method to factorize this. So we start off with by doing 15 times 2, so that's going to get us to 30. So what um, adds to the negative 13, which is from the middle, and what multiplies to that 30 there. A lot of you might start thinking 15 and 2, but that won't work in this case, because one of them would need to be negative, which means that there needed to be negative, so it won't be 15 and 2. But in this case, I think it's going to be negative 10 and positive 3. So they add to negative 13, multiply, to positive 30. So we've got 15x squared minus 13x plus 2 
I'm now going to split up my negative 13x. So that's going to become negative 10x to represent the negative 10 that I found. And then I've got minus 3x to represent the negative 3 that I found. And then I've got plus 2. Um, factorizing, I can see a common factor of 5 and an x. So I've got 5x. And if I divide 15x squared by the 5x, I'm going to get 3x. And then the same thing, negative 10x divided by 5x, that's going to get me to minus 2. Close bracket. I'm now going to repeat the same over here. This one's a bit weird because the only common factor is minus 1. And I now need to go negative 3x divide by negative 1. That's going to be positive 3x. And then I've got negative 2 divided by negative 1. That's going to get me to negative 2. And I like this because the two brackets match, which means I haven't had a nightmare and I've got it right. So my brackets, 3x minus 2. The leftovers, 5x and minus 1, they're going to come together to form the second bracket. So there's my 5x and there's my minus 1. So I'm now going to put that in as my denominator here to see what I can simplify. So we've got 3x minus 2, and then we've got 5x minus 1. And I like this because I can see a common bracket on the top and the bottom, which are going to cancel each other out. So that there will be equal to 3x plus 2 over 5x minus 1. No way we're simplifying that anymore. So final question, 38, final question for this video. We've got a nice wordy question. Normally one of these coming up in every exam. So they played basketball Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. On Tuesday, they st scored twice as Monday. Okay, so let's say, um, as I'm working through the question, let's say x is equal to Monday's points. Because we didn't know that, right? Monday's points. And then we've got on Tuesday, he scored 17 points more than Monday. Um, they've scored 93 points over all three days. How many points did they score on Wednesday? Okay. So if x is equal to Monday's points, Tuesday's will be 2x. So that there will be Tuesday's points. And then after that, x plus 17, because they scored 17 more points on Wednesday than Monday, that there will be equal to Wednesday's points. And this here is what, what we've actually been asked to calculate. So we'll need to go ahead and figure that out later on. So we know that all of these here, they've got to add to 93 because we've been told they scored 93 points over the three days. So we're going to go x plus 2x plus x plus 17 is equal to 93. Um, the x's can be grouped together. That becomes 4x. So 4x plus 17 equals 93. I'm now going to go minus 17 to both sides. And this maths is a bit annoying, so do be careful in the real exam because you don't have your calculators. But that's going to get me to 76. And divide by 4, divide by 4. We know that x is equal to 19. So a lot of people tend to stop there. But just a reminder, x is Monday's points, not Wednesday's points. So we know that x plus 17 will be equal to 19 plus 17, which is equal to 36. And that there would be your answer. So 36 points. So that wraps up another merit focus video for some algebra stuff. Keep an eye. There should be a few excellence videos coming out in the next week or so.